Hi, this is JP from Northern Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus. And this time we have the lately released Nova Hero Pack to look through. So uh, Nova comes with a pre-built aggression deck and also diverts from the standard way that they do Hero Packs. There is one modular encounter set in the deck. So let's see what cards come in the Hero Pack and let's get started. Nova comes with an aggression uh, pre-built deck, so we'll go through all the cards that are in the deck. Also, we'll look at the other aspect cards that come in the deck and uh, the nemesis and obligation sets that come in for Nova. Also, we will look at the end of the video what the uh, encounter set or modular encounter set looks like. But we'll start with the um, signature cards of Nova. So first off, we have uh, Sam Alexander. So Sam Alexander is a civilian on Alter Ego side. So there is an Alter Ego action. Spend one resource of any type, search your deck and discard pile for the, the Supernova helmet, add it to your hand put it in play instead if you paid for this ability using a wild resource and Sam Alexander has 3 recovery uh, hand size is 6 and hit points is 10 uh, first off this alter ego action feels like a once in a game action because after you get your um, helmet into play I don't see any point in using this ability unless some uh, uh, encounter card discards your helmet and you need to uh, get it out of your discard pile or you have to use it as a resource early on play for some other cards but uh, we'll see how that plays out when we get to actually play Nova uh, then we'll go to the hero side uh, Nova uh, has one thwart, one attack and two defense and the champion trait a response after you use one of Nova's basic powers toward attack or defense, ready Supernova Helmet. And the hand size is 5 and hit points is 10. So the superhero hel uh, Supernova Helmet is a really crucial card in the set. You will want to have it in play to utilize its power as much as possible. And other cards will combo out of this for sure. Uh, the hand size is decent, uh, hit points is decent, the sword and attack are not that good, but you can boost those up a bit to make Nova even more of a powerhouse. But we'll see. Uh, let's then start looking at the signature cards. So first off, we have the signature ally Miss Marvel. Uh, so it's the three cost ally, uh, sword one, attack one, champion in human, three hit points. Uh, hero responds after you play an event, exhaust Miss Marvel and deal 1 damage to her. Return that event into your hand uh, and Miss Marvel can be committed as a physical resource. So the, the ally version of Miss Marvel is quite the same as the uh, hero version. So you can get to uh, replay events by using Miss Marvel's ability. So that is pretty good on a, in an event heavy deck, like I think the Nova deck will be. And then uh, we have Falsified Protection. And there are two copies of this in the deck. So Falsified Protection is a one cost event. It's a superpower. Hero interrupt. When a friendly character would take any amount of damage from an attack, prevent 3 of that damage. If you paid for this card using a wild resource, deal 3 damage to, them, to an enemy. And this can be committed as a physical resource. So, uh, again, I, I, I'm seeing a bad pattern here. So, Nova really likes wild resources, apparently. So, you want to have a bunch of wild resources in your deck utilize all of these extra uh, abilities on these cards 
So this looks like a good uh, defensive defensive event with uh, some uh, uh, damage dealing abilities. Next up, we have light speed flight, and there are actually three copies of this in the deck. So uh, light speed flight is a true cost event. It's a superpower port keyworded event. Double the number of wild resources generated while play, uh, paying for this card. Hero action card remove three threat from a scheme. So uh, in this card, uh, you can play it with only one wild resource as it is doubled. So you don't need to have uh, have uh, have to commit a lot of cards to pay for this. So it's a good way to remove threat from a scheme, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Uh, next we have another event, it is uh, Pop Shot, and there are three copies of this. So Pop Shot is a true cost event, attack, super power, double the number of resources, uh, wild resources generated while play, uh, paying for this card, hero action, attack, deal 4 damage to an enemy. So again, you can play this cheaper by using wild resources. And this can be committed as an energy resource. Then we have one of the more interesting cards in the Nova pack. It is the Unleashed Nova Force. There are two copies of this in the deck. Uh, so it's a one cost event, super power, max one per round, hero action. Until the end of the round, each time Nova defeats an enemy or removes the last threat from a scheme, ready Nova and draw a card and this can be committed as an energy resource. So uh, imagine playing this, then having like a bunch of small enemies in play, so you're just playing this, then hitting the enemies one by one, readying, drawing cards. There is no limit how many cards you can uh, draw it, each round with this, so you could end up with a huge hand to play everything you have in the hand and have a really big turn and as there are two copies of this you are not uh, necessarily waiting to get this into your hand to play it so a really interesting card I really wait to, uh, waiting to see how that works out in a game uh, next up we have a resource card it is the connection to the world uh, world mind it, it is a resource card connection to the world mind does not count towards your hand size interesting and it is a wild resource so you can have these in your hand and they don't limit the other cards in your hand so immediately you are getting an immediate effect by having a, a more resources to play the cards in your hand so there are two copies of this so i think this is a really good uh, resource card even though it only gives one resource but it is a free card in your hand so that is interesting uh, then we have Jesse Alexander. Uh, Jesse is uh, two post support persona, alter ego action, exhaust Jesse Alexander, shuffle one copy of connection to the world mind from your discard pile into your deck, draw one card, and uh, it can be committed as a mental resource. So uh, Jesse Alexander feels like a bit of not that good card because uh, Nova feels like you don't want to go to Alter Ego that much, but we'll see. Maybe you have to go to heal sometime, so if you have Jesse in play, then you get an extra card and you get an extra um, connection to the world mind uh, back, back from your discard path into your deck, so we'll see how that works. Then the uh, highly hyped Supernova Helmet, it is a one cost upgrade. So actually, uh, this is the only upgrade in the Nova signature set. Supernova Helmet is a uh, armor traded uh, one cost upgrade. Nova gains the aerial trait, hero resource, exhaust Nova, uh, Supernova Helmet, generate a wild resource. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So uh, some of the cards ready. Well, um, let's quickly 
see what Nova did. So after you use one of Nova's basic powers, uh, ready Supernova Helmet, so you can use Supernova Helmet multiple times in a turn, which is really powerful. So you are uh, not swamp, uh, you are not uh, uh, drained out of resources by having this in play. So you really want to get this into play as fast as possible, and you can do that uh, with the help of uh, Nova's alter ego action. So those were all the signature cards. Next, let's look at the pre-built uh, uh, aggression deck. First off, we have a new aggression ally, the Locust. Uh, the Locust is a two-cost ally with uh, one thwart and one attack, and thwarting costs two consequential damage. Uh, she is a champion. Uh, play only if your identity has this champion trait, so champion uh, tribal there. Uh, hero responds after the Locust enters play. Uh, add one aggression red event from your discard pile to your hand. So when you play this, you get an extra card for your discard. So you, you need to be mindful of when you play the Locust to have a red event in the uh, discard pile. So you can utilize it better. And uh, the Locust can be committed as an uh, energy resource. So, looking interesting. Then uh, we have uh, two copies of Jason Downs. And again, I won't talk about uh, earlier released cards that much. Uh, then we have a new event, uh, Pitchback. And of course, there are three copies of this. Uh, Pitchback is one cost event, Aerial Attack. Play only if your identity has the Aerial Trait. Response. After your hero attacks, deal 4 damage to an enemy, so this seems like a good uh, combo with Nova or other aerial heroes as you might be using your basic attack to attack, uh, but also uh, you can play an attack event, then play this after that, so you can really combo this. But uh, we'll see how that, that functions in a game. Then we have No Quarter, and of course there are three copies. No Quarter is two cost event attack, requirement, physical resource. So a requirement means you need to spend at least one physical resource to play this card. Hero action, attack, deal four damage to an enemy for each point you have you, of excess damage dealt to that enemy by this attack. Discard the top card of your deck and add each aggression red card discarded this way to your hand. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So, no quarter uh, gets you more cards from out of your deck. So, you really want to be playing a, a heavy aggression deck and not just splashing some aggression in there to utilize this. So, We'll see how that functions. Next up, we have a one by one. There are three copies. One by one is one cost event. It is an attack, hero action attack, deal two damage to an enemy. If this attack defeats that enemy, deal two damage to an enemy. So, one cost event that deals two damage, and if you defeat something with it, you get to deal another two damage. So, a kind of a crown crowd control event, so you can get rid of multiple small enemies or minions with this, or get rid of a minion, then hit, uh, hit the villain with the two damage. So, and this can be committed as an energy resource, so that seems like an interesting card. Uh, then we have two copies of the power of aggression. Then we have a new upgrade. There are three copies of uh, this. So Fluid Motion is a one cost upgrade. It is a skill traded upgrade. Hero responds after you play an attack event, exhaust this card. Your hero gets plus one attack until the end of the phase. Max one per attack event. So this doesn't have a limit how many of these you can have in, in play. So you could, could have all, of, all three of them, but you can only activate one of them uh, for each attack event. So, uh, comboing with the Nova card uh, that lets you ready Nova each time uh, he defeats an enemy or removes threats. So, 
you could use multiple of these to boost the attack of Nova for each attack. And this can be committed as an energy resource, so this feels like a decent upgrade and it's cheap. Uh, next up we have Hound Technique. There are three copies of this. Hound Technique is a 3 cost upgrade requirement, double mental, max one per player, so you can only have one play. Uh, interrupt. When you play an aggression attack event, if you paid for that event using a, a mental resource, increase the amount of damage that event deals by its printed cost. So, if you play a high cost event, you get more uh, damage out of it with this. So, a really interesting card, but I think not really good for this deck, because first off, there aren't that many mental resource cards or double cards, but of course you can use the power of aggression to play this. But there are three copies in the pre-built deck and you can only have one per player in play. And uh, you, as I understand, you can't play this under any other player, so you have to play it only for yourself, so... Of course, it's a set, so you have all three copies of it in the pre-built deck, but you can only play one, which is a shame. Then, th those were all the aggression cards. Next up, the basic cards. So, first off, we have uh, Moon Girl. Uh, Moon Girl is a three-cost ally. Uh, two thwarts, uh, two attack, and uh, takes double consequence of damage for each attack and thwart. Champion Genius, three health. Uh, play only if your identity has the champion or genius trait. Response after you play Moon Girl from your hand, draw one card for each uh, mental resource you use to pay for her, and she can be committed as a mental resource. So, want to have mental resources to play her, or cards that generate mental resources, or wild resources, or anything like that to draw cards. And, uh, well, she will work and hit hard for two times and that's it. Next up we have Everyday Hero. So there are three copies of this. There is no limitation that uh, you can have three copies of this in the deck. So Everyday Hero, resource, while your identity has the civilian trait, these cards can be spent for any player and gain the text. Response after you spend this card for a player, heal one damage from that player's identity. And uh, this can be committed as a wild resource, and of course, there are three copies of this. So, uh, first of this feels more of a multiplayer card, not a true solo card, but you have to remember that you can play this on yourself when you're in Alter Ego and still get, uh, uh, get to heal one damage from that player's identity. So, it, it works in true solo, but it is better in multiplayer for sure. Last card in the pre-built deck is Champion's Mobile Bunker. It is a two-cost unique support, champion vehicle, uh, hero action, exhaust champion's uh, mobile bunker, choose an identity with the champion trait, that player who controls uh, the player who controls that identity may draw two cards, then discard two cards from their hand, and this can be committed as a uh, physical resource. So, uh, this is good for getting those cards you need out of your deck, but the cost is you have to discard cards you don't need that at that moment, so you're not getting more cards into your hand, but you are getting the right cards into your hand. So, that looks like a good good card. Next, let's, let's fast look at the new aspect cards. So there are no new aspect cards for leadership. There are only uh, aspect, new aspect cards for justice and protection. Uh, first off, we look at the protection one, and uh, uh, the justice one. Ya yeah, and roll. It, it is a one cost event, aerial thwart. Play only if your identity has the aerial trait. Hero response, thwart. After you hero thwart, remove three threat from a scheme, and this can be committed as a energy resource. So there are three copies of this. So more thwarting for justice. 
lastly of the player cards there is the height advantage uh, one cost upgrade for, for track, uh, protection it is aerial tactic traded while your identity has the aerial trait reduce the amount of damage you take from each enemy attack by one Post interrupt when your turn begins discard this card so it stays in play for the villain phase and you get to take less damage so there are three copies of this so I like this card because it really makes your deck look like you are flying high above the enemies and not taking that much damage so those were all the player cards in the deck next up we'll look at the obligation for Nova the obligation is weight of the world uh, give to the Sam Alexander player while this card is in play supernova helmet cannot ready so this uh, stops the supernova helmet comboing uh, so you want to get rid of it alter ego action exhaust Sam Alexander remove this obligation from the game so not that hard of an obligation but annoying one for sure then uh, we'll go to the nemesis set so we have the uh, bring the war Bring the War is a side scheme. When revealed, each player discards one card they control with the printed uh, wild resource. For each card discarded this way, place one threat here. And this gives an extra encounter card and has a base of two threat on it when it comes into play and two boost icons. So the Nemesis set, of course, um, affects a lot with the Nova's deck building. Uh, style of having a lot of wild resources of course uh, we'll look at the nemesis minion next so we have the war, uh, warbringer warbringer is a minion with one scheme and three attack and an asterisk after the attack and five hit points uh, there are the brute and chitari keywords or traits uh, force interrupt when warbringer attacks you he gets plus one attack for that attack for each card with the printed wild resource in your hand, that attack gains overkill. And there are three boost icons on this card. So if you have a lot of wild icons in your hand, Warbringer hits for a truck load. Then we have two copies of War Delivery. War Delivery is a treachery. When revealed, you may spend one wild resource. If you do not, the villain and war bringer each attack, even if you are in alter ego 4. Ouch. <clears throat> then uh, it has a boost ability and a boost icon. So boost ability, place one threat on the main scheme for each card with a printed wild resource in your hand. So a really nasty card that could <laughs> lose you the game in a wrong moment if you draw it as a boost card. Okay, well, the last card in the Nemesis set is the War Spin Brot. It is a treachery. It has Surge. When revealed, discard X cards from the top of the encounter deck, where X is equal to the total number of printed uh, wild resources on cards in your hand, cards under your control, and cards in your discard box. So this just accelerates the encounter deck. It doesn't do that much, but there is the Surge, so you will get another nasty card after the on this one so uh, not not a nice card to run into and there are no boost icons on that card so that was everything that comes in Nova's hero pack and nemesis set and the obligation and also the other aspect cards lastly uh, FFG decided to divert from the usual release style of these hero packs and add a modular encounter set in this deck and the encounter set in question is Armadillo. So we have Armadillo. I'm uh, looking at the second card in this set first because it's Armadillo itself. Armadillo is a minion. Uh, one scheme, two attack, brute, elitrated, eight hit points. So a really tough one. Uh, he has toughness when he comes into play. Armadillo can have any number of tough status scores. Force response after Armadillo activates against you, give him a tough status score. 
and three boar starters. So Armadillo is pretty annoying to get out of uh, play. Each time uh, he activates against you, he, he gets a new tough card. So you are you might end up in a situation you have to clear like three or four tops before you can even damage Armadillo, so a pretty tough nail to beat. Then uh, the side scheme is uh, Armored Assault. So Armored Assault is a side scheme. Armored, uh, each enemy with tough status card gets plus three attack, so Armadillo with this will hit for five immediately, so that is really tough. Uh, it comes into play with three threat per player and two boost icons. So, really annoying side scheme which you want to get out of play as fast as possible so that Armadillo won't just um, hit like a truck. Then we have Rollin Rollin, which is an attachment. It gives plus two attack to the attached um, enemy. Attached to Armadillo, if Armadillo is not in play, search and counter deck and discard pile for Armadillo, put him into play, engage with you, and attach this card to him to shuffle. Uh, while Armadillo has a tough status card, char characters cannot defend against this attack, so this is a really nasty uh, attachment. Next up, uh, we get the tough and tumble. It is a treachery. When revealed Alter Ego, each enemy with the tough status card schemes with no enemy activated this way, this card gets surge. Uh, when revealed in Hero, each enemy with the tough status card attacks you. If no enemy activated this way, this card gets surge. So, <clears throat> if there are uh, tough status card enemies in play, this does something. If not, then it just surges. So, that is interesting. Then we have two copies of Tough It Out. So, Tough It Out is a treachery. When revealed, if Armadillo and the villain each tough that status card, if one or fewer tough status cards were given this way, this card is search. Okay, so basically, if the villain already has a tough status card, the villain can't get more tough status cards in play, so this might whiff uh, if Armadillo is not in play, so that is why there is search. But yeah, there are two of these, and that is everything that comes in the Nova Hero Pack, so we also get a new um, encounter card. So I'm really excited to get Nova sleeved up and ready to play against something. First off, I thought I might be playing Ultron uh, with Nova, because there are a lot of small minions and I want to see how the... Uh, let's see what was the one card. So I'm really interested in seeing how the Unleash the Nova Force card will handle a ton of small minions, so maybe I'll throw in uh, instead of the usual recommended encounter set, the armadillo set, just to see how that works. So we'll see, but I will be sleeving up the deck and playing a game shortly, so look forward to that gameplay. Hope you guys like this uh, hero pack focus and got some good ideas on how Nova plays and what cards come in the deck and might be, maybe consider getting Nova for yourself. Thanks for watching and until next time.